Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video, you should be able to calculate the efficiency of energy transfer. You should then be able to describe ways to increase the efficiency of an energy transfer, but that's only for higher tier students. I'm showing you here two different types of light bulbs. On the left, we've got an old style incandescent bulb. These are being phased out, but you can still find them in buildings. On the right hand side, we've got an energy efficient LED bulb. These are now increasingly popular in homes around the UK. So in this video, we're going to look at what's meant by efficiency and how we can calculate the efficiency of an energy transfer. Efficiency tells us what fraction of the energy we put into an appliance is transferred to useful forms of energy. We calculate efficiency using these equations. Efficiency equals the useful output energy transfer divided by the total input energy transfer or efficiency equals the useful power output divided by the total power input. You're not given these equations in the exam, so you do need to learn them. Take a look at this question. An electric hob is used to heat water. 15,000 joules of thermal energy is transferred by the hob. 12,000 joules of thermal energy passes into the water. Calculate the efficiency of the energy transfer. So the useful output energy transfer in this case is 12,000 joules of thermal energy passing into the water. The total input energy transfer is 15,000 joules of thermal energy from the hob. Putting these numbers into the equation gives an efficiency of 0.8. Now there are a couple of points about this that you need to learn. Firstly, we've calculated efficiency as a decimal and that's fine. You're expected to do that in your exam. However, we can also calculate efficiency as a percentage, and to do that, we multiply our decimal value by 100, like this. Now, you could be asked to do that in your exam as well. The second important point is that most students who struggle with calculating efficiency write the calculation upside down, like this. Now, you can tell if you've done this because you'll get an efficiency value of greater than 1 or greater than 100%, and that's just not possible. Here's a question for you to try. An electric current delivers a power of 60 watts to a light bulb. 3 watts of electrical energy are transferred to light energy. Calculate the efficiency of the bulb. OK, pause the video now and try this yourself. So here's the equation that we're going to use. Efficiency equals the useful power output divided by the total power input. The useful power output is 3 watts and the total power input is 60 watts. Putting these numbers into the calculation gives us an efficiency of 0.05 or 5%. So as you can see, these bulbs are not efficient at all. In fact, most of the electrical energy that these bulbs receive is transferred into thermal energy, which is simply wasted. LED bulbs, such as the ones we saw before, are much more efficient as a much greater percentage of energy is transferred to light and much less to thermal energy. Now in the exam you could be asked how we can increase the efficiency of an energy transfer, so we're going to go back to the pan of hot water that we saw before. Now as we saw, this method of energy transfer wasn't very efficient. We want thermal energy to pass from the hob into the water. However, a lot of the thermal energy is wasted. We've got thermal energy passing into the air around the edges of the hob that are not in contact with the pan. We've also got thermal energy passing into the air at the surface of the water. We can reduce both of these by using a pan with a wider base and a lid like this. Both of these reduce unwanted transfer of thermal energy. Now the other issue with using a pan to heat water is that a lot of thermal energy is actually used to heat the base of the pan itself. So we can overcome that by placing the heating element inside the water. And that's how an electric kettle works like this. Now there is one final point to consider here. If we go back to the pan, we can see that metal is a good conductor of heat, so thermal energy will pass through the sides and the lid of the pan into the air, like this. Now plastic conducts heat less well than metal. We say that it's got a lower thermal conductivity, and we're going to look at thermal conductivity in a later video. So looking at the kettle, we can see that less thermal energy passes through the walls and the lid and into the air. So again, this makes the kettle a more efficient way of heating water than using a pan. Remember you'll find plenty more questions on calculating efficiency in my revision workbook, 
and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to calculate the efficiency of energy transfer. You should then be able to describe ways to increase the efficiency of an energy transfer, but that's only for higher tier students.